Hi, everyone. So today we're going to be talking about paving the path to proficiency, uh, how you can use assessment to create a path to the global seal while also helping your students and your teachers along the way. So the presentation will have a few parts today. We'll have introductions. Bonnie and I will introduce my, ourselves. We'll define proficiency. Uh, we'll talk about creating a path to proficiency, and then we'll go in depth to each one of those steps including setting benchmarks and goals, the assessments that can be used, analyzing and using assessment data, making modifications based on data, and then about credentialing our learners, which is why we're here for the Global Cred event. So I'll start with the introductions. I'm Bonnie Peterson, and I've been with Avant a couple of years. Prior to that, I started my career as a high school French teacher which I did for about 17 years. And then I was 13 years as a district world languages coordinator. And it was a fun time and challenging because we had a lot of various programs, including a lot of dual language immersion programs. It was in the state of Utah. And I was also the past president of the Southwest Cult and Utah Foreign Language Association. And it's gonna be great to do this presentation today. Well, I don't, I don't have, that long list of amazing accomplishments. Uh, but my name's Nick Gossett. Uh, I've been working with Avant uh, all total about six years. For about five of those years, I was in test development. So I understand how our tests are developed and how they're built and everything that goes into that. I've taught at the college level for a decade, um, run assessment programs, apply linguistics programs. I currently work with our higher ed partners as well as a number of our states with K-12. So Bonnie and I together have quite a lot of experience and we're hoping that we can help guide um, some of you with our experience today. So I'll take over this one and talk about proficiency. Proficiency is the ability to communicate in a language and it's a measurement of, we measure how well students and other people can communicate in the language based on the actual standards. So we use our stamp assessment, for example, which is a standards-based measurement of proficiency. And the lower levels are in the novice, and it goes from novice, intermediate, advanced, up to superior. And when you're thinking of measuring proficiency, oftentimes in the classroom, we focus on performance, which is based on how well you can perform on material which you have learned, but proficiency goes a step farther than that. And it's a measurement of how you could do in any real world setting, regardless of how you learned your language. Yeah, and so the proficiency is the basis of what we do at Avant with our tests. And that's our goal with our language learners is to get them on the road to getting that proficiency where they can use it in their daily lives, use it for travel, use it for work. So let's talk about creating that path to proficiency. So one of the first things that you have to do is you have to set benchmarks and goals. Where are you going to go? Where do you want your learners to go? At various points through the process, you have to assess your learners. Are they meeting these benchmarks? Are they meeting these goals? We analyze the data. We see if modifications need to be made, either at the individual student level or at the teaching level. Maybe we have to modify some of our resources or some of our methods. Mm -hmm. Maybe we have to have intervention. Uh, this is great for dual language programs, college programs, high school programs, all different types of programs, community programs. All these programs can benefit from analyzing data of where our learners are at a given point. We continue to assess, chart their growth, make sure they're meeting benchmarks. Remember to go back, analyze, and modify as needed. It's a cyclical process. It's not one and done when we're assessing students. And we're assessing for a reason. Um, you know, assessment really is about how we use the data. And so at Avant, we're really, for us, it's really important that the, the data is used to dictate what happens in the classroom and where we go with our learners. And then our eventual goal is that our students reach a high enough proficiency to be awarded the global seal of, of biliteracy, to have that credential that everyone will know that they have this ability when they go out into the workforce, when they go out into the world, when they go on to college, when they go on to graduate school or work for international companies in their states, they'll have this credential that's accepted that says they have this speaking, this ability, this proficiency in this language. 
So when you determine your levels of proficiency, that's important for any programs to do to see where they would like the students to be on the pathway in that program. So where would you like your students to be at the end of level one, for example, at the end of level three, maybe when they graduate from high school or from the university's program. So as a program administrator, a teacher, you want to know clearly where you expect your students to be at each step along the way. And by measuring the proficiency of the students, this is a huge step in getting the students there, not just when they exit the program, but in every step along the way. And then you can create your curriculum to go along with that. And you can make sure that your curriculum is helping your students meet those goals and it's supporting your teachers and what they need to do. And one of the things I found as a world languages supervisor is that when we started to assess our students, the lowest part of their assessment was always in listening. And that was shocking at first. And we thought, well, this couldn't be correct because listening is a first acquired skill. But when we put aside our pride and our notions about what proficiency was, we started to really analyze why were our listening scores really lower? And when we answered that, honestly, we realized that the students were hearing the teacher's voice and almost solely the teacher's voice. And teachers were using scaffolding and things like speaking in a teacher voice, using realia, using gestures, repeating things as many times as needed to be. And that's when we made the decision to start using some of our professional development dollars to support teachers in introducing a variety of listening activities to students in a variety of voices and accents. And so by measuring where our students were and really thinking about our program, we were able to support our teachers with better professional development, and then we could see the students growing in that area and all the other areas as well. And so that helped us make changes along the way. And then we continue to track progress of our students every step of the way until they exited our programs. And it even helped us really with our students passing the AP test because in dual language programs, the students in our district, it's, this was in Utah again, they took the AP test at the end of ninth grade. And so that can sometimes be seen as a big hurdle because the AP test is often thought of as only for 11th or 12th graders. And we wanted to make sure our students were going to pass the AP. And so through assessing their proficiency with stamp data, we made sure the students were ready well before the time they sat down to take the test. Yeah, and at, at the higher ed level, I've seen programs use assessment data to ask for more funding that isn't always readily available as sometimes in K-12, they have professional development money set aside. We don't always see that at the higher ed level, but if they can show numbers and show, here's national averages, here's where our students are, we need this to get them to that level, or this is what we're doing well, we need this supported, at times they've been given funds. I've also seen it used when we're adopting curriculum or adopting new textbooks. Mm -hmm. When they're building that, we have to look at where our students are. How does that align to our goals? Are we do are we using materials, as Bonnie was saying, with listening? Are we using materials that support that student's ability in that in that domain? And so I think there's a lot of things we can do by looking at the data, setting these goals and benchmarks, but also assessing where we are on this path, on this road. Right, Nick. And in secondary programs or well, even elementary programs that in the public education domain, proficiency is something we we all want, but oftentimes our stakeholders aren't aware of what we need to get there, but they really speak in terms of data. So things like school boards and higher up people in the administration and even parents really react to data. So when we could show the data of where we wanted to be and how we were getting there, then they listen to us when we asked for those dollars to support our programs, much more than they would have if we just said, well, we really want our kids to have proficiency. Data speaks to those stakeholders. Especially in the dual language programs, the, mm -hmm. the taxpayers and the people in charge of those programs want to see that their money is being put to, to good use, that these students are learning. So that's this is a perfect segue into the assessments we can use with our students. We offer four major assessments that could be used. We, we have a, a couple of other ones, but the four major ones we can talk about are place. This is perfect if you have students coming into a program. This is great if you have students coming from middle school to high school. 
they're feeding into one high school from maybe five or six middle schools. And we all know that no class and no student is created the same. So that's a great way to bring a student into a program to see where they are, where they can place in your program. Our 4S is our major test that is approved for the Global Social Bioliteracy. It's four skills um, available in 14 languages. And we're adding more. Uh, we're always looking to add more to support those languages, and support those students. Right. Along with that is our 4SE. Um, that is age appropriate for our elementary uh, students. And then also our WorldSpeak, which is an affordable lesser taught language test that we offer in over 24 languages um, that can really validate students in districts, students at the university level that have home knowledge that come from an area um, that maybe that language isn't taught or really spoken. So these are four major assessments that can really help with benchmarking and help with meeting those goals. And so Bonnie, what, what did you find useful in your experience using PLACE, using STAMP? Oh, I wish I had had PLACE when I was a high school French teacher because I, just like you mentioned, I had students coming to me from various different schools in the district. And it seemed like my first month or two, which is a good chunk of the school year, was just was just spent getting all of my students at the same level, figuring out where the students were. And if I could have had a tool like place, it would have made my life so much easier. And even for that of my teachers. But when I was the World Languages Supervisor, we used STAMP extensively we started very small just a few students in one high school to ensure that they're ready for the ap test and then it grew and grew until we were testing thousands of students each year and we tested our students in the dual language immersion program to make sure they were meeting those benchmarks because like you said taxpayers are investing in our students and they want to make sure they're getting their money not that the students are just sitting there in class that's not good enough for taxpayers anymore when they put students in dual language immersion programs. They really want to know that these kids are going to be graduating with global skills. And so we use the stamp test for that almost every step along the way. And then I had a real strong feeling that we couldn't just say to our students, um, you're one of the 20% in the district that's in a dual language immersion program. Lucky you, you get to have global proficiencies. I wanted all of our students to have that chance. And so we started to assess with the staff all of our 7th through 12th graders in levels 3 and higher, just to show that they were gaining in proficiency as well. And that really was a game changer because then it not only supported us in showing that our students were meeting those expectations, but it really supported our teachers to show what they were doing was valid and they weren't just the step cousin of immersion, but they were also a valid way because there should be more than one pathway to proficiency. So we wanted to create two viable pathways, the traditional programs and the immersion programs and STAMP was an invaluable tool. And so that's, that's really when I became a huge fan of STAMP is when I started using it in all of our schools with our students and seeing the big difference it made in my teachers. And then working with schools throughout the Midwest, which is most of my territory now with Avant, we use the 4S for Global SEAL for program efficacy and the World Speak for both of those reasons as well. And I just see it giving students validation for what they're doing and teachers validation for what they're doing. Yeah, and we'll talk a little bit more about a little bit more about World Speak in a second. So we're going to go through each one of these assessments to talk about what languages are available and kind of show you a little bit what they look like. So this is our place. This is the one Bonnie wished she had had <laughs> when she was teaching high it. school French. <laughs> um, it's a quick, affordable way to accurately place students. In a language. As you can see, it's available in Arabic, French, German, Italian, Japanese, Mandarin, and Spanish. Um, it's There's three options with this test. So it can be something that's quickly done and you get results automatically with our reading and our contextualized grammar. It can be done where you have writing and speaking, where the students provide those samples and those are rated by our Avant raters. So there's options there for all types of not only budgets, but types of programs and how you want to yeah. assess your students. 
And again, this is a great jumping off point for students entering your program. You now, what um, I really like about this test, Nick, is that it doesn't need to be administered with a proctor. So you can have students do it from wherever they are because it's not a high stakes test. There's not a global seal or high school or college credit writing on this test. It's for correct placement. And so it does the student no good to, let's say, cheat on the test mm -hmm. or for the teacher to provide helps to the student. Because when it comes to a place test, you really want to know where the students are going to be the most successful. So when the students understand that this is going to help them be the most successful wherever they're placed, and it's just to show what they can do. So absolutely, a yeah. has a student moving in, they can have them do it at home. A university that has a student that's registering and they want to know where to place them, the student can take this test in their own home without being proctored. Absolutely. We have a partner in California University that has students in China and Japan taking yeah. a placement test for their program because they can do it anywhere in the world. And it, it's, it's so easy for them to just give them the information, they test, they have the results, they're able to register before they even start the semester, before they come to class. So it's, it's a great tool. Like Bonnie said, it doesn't need to be proctored because it's meant for quick and accurate placement. Yep. Exactly. Our WorldSpeak um, is a great, is a gr an excellent test for these lesser taught languages, less commonly taught languages, or less commonly offered languages. Although in some parts of the world, these languages are have millions of speakers. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're just pockets within various parts of the United States. But as you can see, it's available in multiple languages. And this is a two skill writing and speaking test. Uh, we're adding more languages every year. We're adding Canada this year. Um, it's affordable um, for being a two skill test in some of these languages. But it provides the opportunity for these heritage programs, for these community programs, for these students. Um, from these small populations to validate their language abilities. And it's accepted by the global seal for credentialing for the global seal. So students speaking Yupik can test and have their language assessed. Students speaking Tamil can test and have their language assessed and validate their skills in that language. A language that, as far as I know, isn't really taught in high schools around the country. Um, so this is a great option. And I know, um, you know, Bonnie working in Utah, you probably had a number of students speaking languages other than French and Spanish. We sure did. And in Texas, which is a, one of my territories that I cover for Avant, they have a very robust credit by exam program. And Many states have one. We had it in Utah. Students could get up to two years of high school credit for demonstrating that they have proficiency in a language. But in Texas, students can earn up to four years of credit. And what I love about the World Speak test is it takes those languages that we don't teach in our schools and allows students to demonstrate that they have it. Maybe they've just moved from that country or it's a, the language of their parents and they have these global skills and they're coming to our schools with them. And oftentimes I found as a district coordinator that some students were not always proud to show off their language skills. Being bilingual or a global citizen wasn't always recognized as a good thing, unfortunately. But when we can take these students and say, no, it is a good thing and we can show you how, take this test in Tamil or Telugu. And not only do we get to now celebrate your language skills, but you can earn up to four years of high school credit because of that. And that has really been a game changer with my schools in Texas because some of these students have just moved to our country and they want to be able to graduate from their high school that they're now attending, but they're lacking credits. And so this is a great way to help students graduate and get on to the pathway of becoming real global citizens because they've already got this great skill of being at least bilingual. Yeah, and I think sometimes ha having a, a bilingual child myself, sometimes it's difficult for them to show those abilities than just say, yeah, I grew up speaking it. Having this credential that they can show people, yes, I speak Czech, my parents were Czech, but I do have this knowledge and I have this ability. That helps them go on out in the world and have this documented ability, not just, well, I grew up speaking it, but it yeah. validates what they know. And I think that's an awesome 
tool for any student. And I think it's amazing that we can continue to add languages and offer these languages um, that are sometimes, you know, uh, kind of forgotten, you know, because they're not the major languages. And so I think this is a great opportunity. And I think Texas is a great example. Other states can follow suit or this can give other states an example to go to their state and say, Texas does this. Why don't we push for this for our students who speak Tagalog, who speak Haitian Creole? Exactly. One of our tests is Marathi. And we got that because of a really involved community of Marathi speakers in the state of Texas. And they they went to their school board and said, we would like our students to be able to test and get credit. The other kids that speak Chinese or Spanish, they're getting high school credit, but our students speak Marathi. Why aren't they able to get credit? And that great district, they put that community in touch with us. And then at Avant, our test developers were able to work with this Marathi speaking community and together we created the Marathi test. And now it's not only helping students in in Texas, but across the United States. And that's just what Avant does. We work with these communities across the country to make sure that their students are being recognized for their global skills. Absolutely. So that's why I want to talk about it. Absolutely. our test that a lot of that most people use is our our 4S. This is our most well-known test, available in 14 languages, uh, simplified and traditional Chinese. Um, but this is what is also an accepted test for the global seal by literacy, and this is a great test. We've spoken a little bit about already. It's four skills: uh, reading, writing, listening, and speaking, and it really gives you some robust data to work with in your programs. It's accepted for state and global seals of biliteracy. So it makes it a great test to use as a program assessment at various points throughout a program. Mm -hmm. Going along with that, sorry, yeah, go ahead, Vaughn. We go back to that 4S. What I loved about it is because a lot of our programs, they, they traditionally focus on the student's ability to read or do grammar or you know, those things I did when I was a teacher, unfortunately, when you know better, you do better. But when I started teaching back in the 80s, we decided what to cover in our textbook by the number of units we thought we could cover. And it wasn't based on proficiency. But when you've got this stamp data that's that's showing your proficiency of your students, it really helps you create a program that is completely about proficiency and what can the students actually do with the language. And so that test data of the stamp for us just makes all the difference for programs. Absolutely, absolutely. And going along with that is the 4SE, which is age appropriate um, for skill. It's designed for students in grade six and below. Uh, We have it in a number of languages as well, actually even uh, more languages than we have for the 4S because of the populations we work with. Again, Cantonese was built specifically with a young population in mind and working with that community to develop that. So this is a, an age appropriate for us for those in grade six and below. And this is great information to have when you have immersion for dual language immersion programs. This is great data to take a student from the 4SC up to the 4S when they get to middle and high school and have that longitudinal data on those students to see the progression throughout your program. It helps continue to ask for funding. It helps to see your students trajectory and 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 work look at your curriculum so the 4s and the 4c can work really well in, in different programs um so yeah that's that's great but now we have to look at that data and analyze it and use that data for different for whatever purposes are needed so this is kind of what it looks like within our system of a score report so on the left here you have what it looks like across levels so you can look at your data across all your levels of students not taking into account individual students, but looking at your program level assessment. Go, okay, where is my Spanish program here? Okay, my, I have a lot of students at the novice high writing level. This is after one year. Let's assume that. That's a great place to be in our program plan. That's what we're doing right. But let's look at our reading. It's all over the board. What can we do to bridge those gaps and bring some of those students up with reading? So looking at that data from that level can really give you some information. And on the right is an individual score report that you can access and give to a student 
that tells them, basically explains to them proficiency at each domain, what they can do, and then what they need to do to work to the next level. And so it really yeah. gives students the ability to see okay. what they can do. Right. And what I love about that, that printout, that PDF of each individual student is it not only shows them where they are in each of the four domains, but then it talks about it in terms that the parents and student understand. So a parent or a student looking at a report might not understand when they just see your intermediate mid. What does that mean to most people? But it actually explains in each of the four domains, your intermediate mid, and that means that you can currently do this. And then the real money for educators like me comes when you look at that column on the far right is then it breaks down what the students need to be able to demonstrate to move up to the next higher level. So the students see where they are in the proficiency ranges and then they see what that actually means and then tells them what they need to do next to get to that higher level. So even for the students, it gives them a vision of where they are and where they're going and makes it tangible, not some ephemeral idea that, oh, I'm going to gain in proficiency. I don't know what that means, but I'm hoping it happens. But it really shows them what they're going to be able to do next if they stick with the program. Absolutely. Absolutely. But this data can tell us what we can do. Like Bonnie was saying, that far right, that far right column can say, this is what students need to do to get to the next level. That is what we have to do in the next level of that class. If that was Spanish one, what do we need to do in Spanish two to get them to that next level? So we can review the data to see where their deficiencies may exist at the student level or at you know the three thirty five thousand foot level. We can individualize instruction for certain students. And then what I want Bonnie to talk about is the professional development we can provide for teachers. Right. By looking at that data that you can see what your students are doing, let's, imagine that you're looking at data for Spanish 3 program and you can see where your students are and your expectations do they need it or do they not and in which of the four domains are your students falling short do your teachers need to make it more meaningful for the students by involving more re real world scenarios because maybe the students are only used to doing textbook kind of work and then you can bring in professional development and proficiency training and ways to get the students writing more, speaking more. And it just, it just helps you use those dollars wisely because education dollars are hard to come by. And it seems even more difficult in the world language program because we're, we're maybe not one of the main tested areas. And so as a, a curriculum specialist or as an administrator, you can actually see where your weaknesses and strengths are and build off of those and speak to those stakeholders that are holding the purse strings. And one of the tools that I know Tom, that Bonnie really likes is our advanced product. Love that. Yeah, that made all the difference for me when I first got my hands on this several years ago. I was training. Um, I'll just give you a little back background. We had about 70,000 students in our district and about 20% of them we're in an immersion program and we were hiring teachers from China, Taiwan, France, Spain, Mexico, Costa Rica. Um, and those teachers often would be coming on J1 visas so they could stay for a year up to three years. And as because our immersion programs were growing incrementally each year, we were adding different grade levels. We were hiring approximately 30 to 50 new teachers in the world languages every year which is a huge task. And we needed them because our, our program was based on proficiency. We needed our teachers to be trained thoroughly in proficiency. So we would offer week long courses for our teachers over the summer and even on the weekends during the school year to really help them better understand what proficiency meant. So they were teaching to proficiency and not to a textbook. Well, because of the nature of J1 visa holding teachers, they often go home in the summer or there's a high overturn. And, and I would only have about 30% of my teachers really trained in it at any given time. And when I found out about the advanced tool and knew that teachers could do this on their own time at home, it really was a game changer because then all of my teachers were speaking the same language when it came to proficiency. They understood and it helped us better align our courses both vertically and horizontally. 
And we were also able to work with our district to give the teachers who completed the advanced training um, professional development credit so they could use that towards lane changes for their salary. And that helps the, helps the students because when their teachers are trained in proficiency, it's making the coursework that much more meaningful. So we were able to offer advance to our teachers and give them credit for it. And now I have many districts in my territories that are doing the same thing. And I just, I just think it's an invaluable tool. Especially now where we can't go to conferences as much or the conferences have been, right? You know, this is something they can do at home. Right. I've had a, I've had a number of teachers contact me and say, I'm really excited to do this over my Christmas break. I, I wouldn't suggest that, but some teachers want to because, you know, they're not getting all the conference presentations that they've been wanting, that they've been needing. They're not getting in-person training that is so valuable for our teachers. And a lot of times world language teachers are already kind of left behind when it comes to professional development in many districts. This is a great opportunity for teachers to be welcome to proficiency if it's new to them, to yeah. refresh about proficiency because as I tell my students, practice makes permanent, you know, and <laughs> it's that. not perfect because language isn't perfect, but it makes it permanent. And I think it's a great tool for K through 12, higher ed, anybody to help with refreshing about proficiency, learning about proficiency, practicing proficiency, seeing how your teaching improves after you've done this and, and, and all, and all the, those types of things that come with it. So I think it's a great tool. Yeah, many um, of my teachers did it on their own at home. Like when I did it, I did it at home out on my patio in the evening with a beverage and just was thinking, oh, this is the best way to do professional development. <laughs> many of my schools opted to do it as a department. And I'll tell you what, that was where it was really powerful because they would spend their time uh, when their principal would give them a day or so to work together or they would get it um, out when they were doing their department meetings. And it's geared by language. So if you're a French teacher, you're seeing French samples and you're understanding why that French student rated why they what they did. And if you're doing a Spanish one, you're getting it in Spanish. My Chinese teachers were getting it all in Chinese. and I often wondered about my native, my teachers that were native to another country, were they really understanding those week long seminars I was giving in proficiency? Because when you come to education, uh, our vernacular can be kind of unique to us. And we're speaking all these very educated terms about proficiency. And I was hoping that they were understanding, but when I was able to give them the advanced tool and it's in their language, then I was ensured that they really were getting it and understanding it and they can work with other teachers who teach the same content and they could bounce their ideas and their learning off of each other. That's when it really became powerful was when it was done within a department and within a school. So that's just an idea that really worked for us in Davis District. That's a great idea. That's a great idea to keep that connection yeah. with teachers, especially when we're remote, virtual and all the situations we're in. It's great camaraderie and support to, to do that together, but also being available in their languages. It, right. it really gives them that extra practice. And um, I think that's a great tool. So I think that's a great, that's a great idea. So we've done all of this. We, we we're making modifications based on our data. We're, we're testing our students, we're assessing, we're getting them through this path. Mm -hmm. What's the end? What's the carrot? What's, what's at the end of this rainbow? Yeah. We credential them. And why yeah. we're here is the global seal. Mm -hmm. So, as you can see, these are the tests that Avant currently has that are available for awarding the Global Seal, our Avant Stamp 4S, our Avant World Speak, and our Avant Arabic Proficiency Test, or APT. And then the score is needed to reach the different levels of the Global Seal. So, this is an affordable way to provide this credential. It's a great option for students graduating a program. It's a great option for students who are finishing a sequence, could go further, but maybe don't. This could help retention. I know we've seen that at both high school and college level where students have decided to stay in a program to get that next level. They, let's say they, they test for the functional, functional fluency. Well, they stay in that, uh, that class for another year or two, they can go up to that work fluency. Right. Right. And so that that's our goal as educators is to continue their life 
long process of learning a language. And I think it's really valuable for schools, whether it's a university or a K-12 type of setting, if we focus on not only getting the school, the students credentialed, but the educators within the building, because really global proficiency is for everybody, not just those who are in the world languages programs. But when we have a department, maybe a teacher over in the math department who also has their global syllabi literacy and the principal has his global syllabi literacy and the world language teachers have all credentialed for the global syllabi literacy. How powerful is it for that? community and for those students to see that global skills are for everyone and the kind of the kind of learning you do in a world languages program is going to help you in no matter what field you go into and so i would like to encourage schools to not only have their students get the global sale but also their educators because they're the role models for those kids and showing them what's coming for them in the in the future that's a great idea that's a great, and it's and it's an economical way to do it, and right. it, you could have a big celebration about it and celebrate everyone getting this global seal. And exactly. you know. yeah, you, you could have a big ceremony when when you would give those uh, certificates out or the pins, or whatever you do, but showing we value global skills in this in this school. We recognize that this is something that most of you are going to need, if not all of you, over your lifetime. And we value it so much that we're doing it as adults. And so you could do that for your educators, for your students, and celebrate that and even get involved with the, the media, having the newspaper come out and do a story about you and your students and, and your educators and celebrating something that has often been overlooked. And now we get to recognize it. And I think it's great for those students who are in ELL programs, ESL programs, because that can validate not only their home language or their native language, but also their English abilities. And I think that's a great opportunity for students. Right, because we have to remember it's there's two languages students need to show they're proficient in two languages. So those two languages that they're proficient in, they absolutely have global skills and they can function around the world. In my district, Davis School District, we often focused a lot of our money and attention on STEM skills, which is great. I have nothing against STEM skills, but I tried with every chance I could to talk about, I do value STEM skills, but I think unless we can raise a generation of students that can use those STEM skills across languages and culture with grace and understanding, we're not really preparing them for the world they're going to be inheriting. So. Absolutely. Giving those students those gifts of biculturalness is so important. Absolutely. So I want to thank Bonnie for your time today and your experience you. and your, it's just been amazing hearing all the things you've done and what advice you can give to teachers and administrators and district supervisors and every other hat you've ever worn. It's, it's great. Um, Bonnie and I are just two of the very of the number of us that are account managers at Avant. Um, our website is avantassessment.com. If you want to reach any of us, you can email info at avantassessment.com and it'll get to the correct person. Absolutely. We hope we can help you and your students on their path to proficiency. Bonnie, would you, do you have anything else you'd like to say? No, I think we've said it all, but thank you so much for having me today. And I wish everyone the most success on their pathway to proficiency with their students. Okay, thank you. Thank you.